Man, I keep recalculating our numbers and we're still barely making even. What the heck's going on? Maybe opening a health center wasn't the best idea. If only there was a group of individuals with a unique set of accounting skills that could help me out. Did someone ask for a group of individuals with unique accounting skills? I did. Who the heck are you guys? We're just what you asked for, Dr. Thomas. We're Group J. What seems to be the problem? Well, it seems that we're barely breaking even, and it seems that we need improvements in our financial performance. Could you maybe look at our numbers and come up with something? That's why we're here. Well, we already have a presentation for you. Shoot, that was fast. So we're looking at the weakness of the bridge stone companies right now. Um, the first one is limited volume of services. Uh, what I mean by limited volume of services is that the uh, sources of income of the company is not enough um, to um, kind of like counter any uh, risk in the future. So if anything happened to our current sources of income, we might stop making money, um, not even like needless to say, um, profits. So we need to open up and expand more sources of income. And the second one is we're having too much fixed cost uh, after uh, in our contribution margin. So contribution margin is another concept, which I will explain later. But here, um, so fixed cost is okay. But like after our analysis, there are a lot of fixed costs that, can, that we can get rid of. So uh, that's something we should work on as well. Uh, the third one is the companies currently relying heavily on Medicaid subsidies. So if anything happened to the current policy, um, the company might, lost, might lose a huge part of um, its revenue um, and might experience a loss. So, so we're looking at the um, revenue, total revenue of the company. <coughs> and uh, you can see the contribution margin is 70% of the total revenue. So what I mean by contribution, contribution margin here is the degree of variable expense in the total revenue. So higher contribution margin means less variable expenses and the lower means um, more variable expenses uh, in the <coughs> total revenue. Um, so after our calculation, uh, the contribution margin uh, in the com in, in company's total revenue is seventy percent, which means that the variable expenses only take up takes up thirty percent of the total revenue, which is pretty good. It's a relatively low uh, <coughs> it's a relatively low variable expenses in the total revenue, but Although we have 70% of uh, contribution margin to cover our fixed expenses, what happened is after deducting variable and fixed cost, we're only having $9,000 profit, also known as margin of safety. So what's, why is that? Um, so we know, we know variable cost only takes up 30%, and um, the rest 70% should cover the fixed cost, right? But after covering the fixed cost, we're only left with $9,000. So, which means that the fixed cost takes up the uh, remaining 70%. So, what are we going to do here? Like, considering considering the total revenue is $5 million, like, that's a super, that, that's like a super small part of uh, our total revenue to be the profit. So my advice, my advice is here is first decreasing discretionary fixed costs. So discretionary fixed costs are fixed costs that can be get rid of to some extent. For example, um, like advertising, office supplies, and travel. These are fixed costs that can be get rid of. Like instead of um, the salaries you pay to the employee or the lease of your office, that cannot be get rid of. And the second advice is uh, increasing contribution margin. So, um, increasing contribution margin means making more parts of your revenue available to cover the fixed cost. For example, also, also it can be understood as um, mm, having more sources of income. Like, for example, um, offer more services to um, different types of clients, like this one, off-campus programs, um, to um, clients other, other than those from school. Since the operating situation is hard, we decide to decrease 10% of discretionary fixed costs. This graph shows the total fixed cost changed by deducting 10% of discretionary fixed costs. So on the left side, it shows original total fixed cost, and right side is new total fixed cost. As we can see, the salaries and benefits changes from 1,827 to 1,644, and, cons and consulting fees changes from 174 to 157, as well as transportation, office supplies, and other. 
real-time differentiation is necessary for upgrading, so we can change them. So here's the question. Is decreasing 10% of discretionary fixed costs good for the upgrading? So the first analysis says decreasing 10% of discretionary fixed costs reduces operating pressure. This graph shows break even points affected by change in fixed cost. So the left side shows original fixed cost and original break even points. And the right side is new fixed cost and new break even points. So the original break even point is 4,991. And the new break even point is 4,605. So the new break even point is about like 8% less than the original break even point. So is that better for the operating? Yes, because it means the company can sell less volume of products and services to cover all fixed costs, and uh, it will be easier for operating, So, which means reducing the operating pressure. The second analysis is increasing 10% of discretionary fixed costs will keep a higher margin of safety. This graph shows margin of safety affected by changing fixed cost. So the left side is margin of, original margin of safety and the original breaking point. And this one is new margin of safety and new breaking point. So the original margin of safety is about like $9,000. And the margin of safety ratio is kind of like almost 0%. That is incredible for a company. So what does it mean? It means like if the company reduces $9,000 of its sales, they will begin incurring losses. So the new margin of safety changes to 394,000. It changed by 8% higher. So is that good? Yes, it's good. Because the higher the margin of safety, the lower the risk of breaking even and incurring a loss. So new fixed cost is better. The third analysis is decreasing 10% of discretionary fixed cost reduces the risk. So let's say this two graph. This two graph uh, describe the contribution margin, and this is the like this is the original net operating profit, and this is the new operating pro operating profit. And for the original net operating profit, it's just like three thousand uh, six thousand three hundred. So what does it mean? It means like the company only earned six thousand three hundred profit for a year. That is amazing for the company. So the new operating profit changed to two seventy six. It get better. So we're going to use this number to calculate the operating leverage. So the, or, the original operating leverage is 555. That is so high. And the, the new operating leverage is 12. So what does this number mean? It means with the operating leverage of, of, uh, of 555.5, if the company decreases its sales by 10%, that operating income would decrease by 5,555%. I can't imagine that. It's kind of like so risky. And but for the new operating leverage, with the operating leverage of five, if the company decreases its sales by 10%, net operating income will decrease by 120%. So it's kind of better and less risky. Okay, so now we are going to talk about the first financial impact if group counseling unit of service volume decreases by 10% during the first quarter. So here we see that due to the 10% 10 10 decrease, um, the original volume of the unit of service for Medicaid revenue is 7,000, but due to the decrease, it is now 6,300. As well, we also have to note that due to volume co variable costs using uh, the same amount of volume, it also ends up decreasing. So now the new medication test is now going to be 31,500, as well as for other, it is now going to be 450. So the new total revenue for group counseling is 190,125, and the new total variable cost for the group counseling is going to be 31,950. So now we see that due to that, the original was uh, original company revenue is 1,250,000, but now due to those decreases, it is going to be 1,228,875. As well as for the new total company variable cost, the original was 375,000, but now it's going to be 371,450. Um, now, due to this, we are also going to have a new contribution margin, which is now going to be a difference of 17,575, which the new volume is going to be 857,425, giving that a total of net loss of negative 16,000. For the next analysis, it is when the financial impact of Bridgerton's group, count, group counseling reimbursement rate decreases by 10% as well. Due to this being only the reimbursement rate, 
So the only difference is going to be that the rate decreases by 10%, which is only going to be a $3 difference. But because variable cost only is affected by the unit of service, which isn't being changed, the only difference is now going to be in total revenue for group counseling, which is going to be $190,250. But variable cost stays the same at $35,500. So this gives a new total company revenue of $1,229,000. Total company variable cost stays the same at three hundred seventy-five thousand, but now due to this, the contribution margin is a twenty-one thousand difference, giving a net pro net loss of negative one nine negative nineteen thousand four hundred twenty-five. So due to those two scenarios, we see that actually decreasing the reimbursement rate is worse than actually decreasing the unit of service. Actually decreasing um, the units to nine hundred for case management, and we are increasing the unit, units to 8,600 for group counseling. However, due to this having the same um, amount of increase and decrease for the departments, we actually see that the company revenue stays the same. However, for variable costs, it's a little bit much different due to the changes of units of service. For the case management, we see that there's a decrease of 1,500, but for group counseling, we see that there's a group counseling decrease, uh, or actually increase of 43,567, thus giving us a new total company variable cost of 382,067, which the difference is going to be an increase of 7,067, thus giving us a net loss of 5,492. And for the final financial impact would be if fixed cost actually increases by 1% during the first quarter. So here we see that if we are increasing our total cost, um, we are actually seeing that everything else stays the same due to it not being impacted by financial cost. So here we see that there's a net loss of 7,159 with 25 cents. Like you seen earlier, your company is barely breaking in with a small margin of safety that's super small compared to the revenue you guys are bringing in. So the obvious solution is to increase profits. And there are two ways to go about this, either by increasing medical rates or by decrease or decreasing variable and or fixed costs. And since medical rates can't be necessarily raised, the best next solution is to decrease our discretionary variable and fixed costs. And based on our CDP analysis, we recommended three things internally. First is to maintain current service volumes. We think that at the level you guys are, you should actually maintain your current service volumes because if you guys were to decrease service volumes even by 10%, you guys are actually losing money instead of making money. And the reason why we don't want to increase service volumes is because that comes with more additional costs and much more headaches. Second, we want to decrease variable expenses, i.e. such as consulting fees, as well as decreasing discretionary expenses such as transportation, office supplies, etc. And by decreasing variable and or fixed expenses, we're taking less costs away from the revenue, meaning that our break-even is even lower, meaning we're allowed to make even more profit. Thanks to Group J's recommendations, Bridgestone is now one of the most profitable clinics in the world, and business is booming. Thanks, Group J.